The word of the day today is hater. I'm going to be the biggest hater imaginable because today I'm talking about all the records that I hated the most this year. This is the bottom of the pile. This is the worst of the worst. And I'm so excited to get into all of this drama with you here today. But before I do, hey, hi, hello, my name is Dan Frampton, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about rock and roll music. I have a slop channel that I do recommend that you go follow right now. It's called The Art of Slop. But if you're here, I really appreciate you, especially if you're here within the first three hours. That means you're in the three hour gang and I take priority with your messages. I will reply. That, my friends, is the Frampton guarantee. And with all of that house cleaning out of the way, it's time to start talking about the worst records of the year. And for that, I used albumoftheyear.org to kind of catalog all this sort of stuff. So the 14th worst record that I heard this year was Saviors by Green Day, which was actually kind of a step up from their previous effort, Father of All, because that record was the worst record that came out that year. But this record over here, Saviors, only the 14th worst record of the year. Here's what I said about it at the time. I gave it a 52 out of 100 and said this. Saviors barely squeaks out a passing grade here. A few catchy hooks here and there are not going to save them from my ruthless wrath. It was nice to see Green Day when it first dropped, so I had the rating sitting in the 70s somewhere. What the hell was I thinking? This shit sucks. Nostalgia and hope are powerful emotions. Not really a great record, I didn't love it all that much. Some really high marks out here from DIY, Distorted Sound, Blabbermouth.net, Spill Magazine, Far Out Magazine, NME. They all love this thing. So if you trust these scores, then by all means, go ahead and listen to this record. But do you see what I mean when I say that this is all just access journalism at this point? Because this record really wasn't a 100. So what would DIY Emma Swan over here be doing rating this 100? I hate this. This just means that you're kind of muddied. You're compromised. You're not a reviewer that I trust whatsoever. All right, moving on to the 13th worst record I heard all year. It's actually being categorized as a must-hear album on Album of the Year. A lot of people are really liking it. It's Pearl Jam. That's right, Pearl Jam are back. First, we were talking about Green Day, and if we couldn't go any more old school, I was going to go Pearl Jam next. So here we go, another Pearl Jam record on the docket, and people are just giving this the highest marks of all time. Am I crazy? Because when I listened to this thing, I was just like, this is the most boring, formulaic rock and roll that I could even imagine hearing right now. I didn't hear anything creative. I didn't hear anything fun, new, or interesting. It was just Pearl Jam being Pearl Jam, and I'm pretty familiar with rock and roll over the last 40 years, okay? And these guys did not bring anything new here. They may have had one or two good songs back in the day, but here is not where you're gonna find any of them. And I just couldn't believe it. I said at the time, I guess I'll just never be a Pearl Jam guy because I'm not hearing what the fans are hearing. I'm not hearing what the critics are hearing. They absolutely love this thing. Me, I was nonplussed, okay? Seeing Kerrang! give a 100 in the music world, it's just like seeing IGN give a perfect 10 in the gaming world. You cannot trust the journalists. That's why you have to follow YouTubers. That's why you have to follow people on social media accounts whose opinion you trust. Because journalists are compromised. And a lot of content creators are too. You really have to be careful out here. You know the Black Crows also put out a record this year? I didn't hate it quite as much. I gave it a 57. Before I move on with this video, I just want to shout out Turbo Queer. She used to moderate my Discord when that was a thing. And recently, she lost her entire channel. So I said I was going to do a little bit of a shout out and that's what this is right here. Go over to the new Turbo Queer channel and subscribe today. I'm going to leave a link to one of her videos down in the description. It's called I took my Sega Dreamcast to a punk rock show. Go check it out. Okay, back to the video. My god, there are so many old bands at the bottom of this list right now. And the next one I got to talk about is worse than everything we talked about so far. 
finally leaving the 50 rating radius over here. We're entering the 40s. I gave Strung Out Dead Rebellion a 49. Here's what I said at the time. Swing and a miss, bada bada. Probably their worst record. And I stand behind it. I didn't like this thing at all. The critics didn't really come out and give a single review for this thing, but the fans overall did not enjoy it. User score of 54. Coming out on fat records. This thing is not worth your time. This thing is not worth a listen. Strung Out do have some good songs, but really, just stay in the 90s, Strung Out. Coming in at the 11th worst record I heard this year is a record that a lot of people actually enjoyed as well. Tank by Idols. I thought this thing was brutal. Maybe the most pretentious piece of art rock post-punk that I could even imagine listening to. They were like, oh, how can we be artsy and weird, but make people think that we're being like avant-garde and stuff? Let's just do that, guys. It really is just eye-rolling, pretentious, post-punk trash that has a penchant for their own farts. I hate this album. I still hate this album. It is no good. Bro. God. Man, oh man. Everybody that is a critic under the sun walking God's green earth tended to love this thing. They were huge fans. I guess I'm in the vocal minority over here, but this record was really trash. There is some really good art rock. There is some really good post-punk that came out this year, and this, my friends, is not it. I might do a best of video where I tell you the good ones, but for now, just stay away from this. Watch the music videos from it, though. They are kind of funny, in a so bad they're funny kind of way. Cracking the top 10 of my worst record list over here is From Zero by Linkin Park. All of these legacy bands dropping records that I absolutely hate this year, and Linkin Park is no exception to that rule, okay? I did a whole video doing this review. I had a lot to say about this record. I'm not gonna read it all. I'm not gonna go into great detail. Go watch my entire video on that if you wanna hear me rip this thing to shreds. But essentially, I gave it a 39. I'm not happy with it. If you do go watch my review on this record though, in that video, Xenu of the Religion Scientology chimes in with his review and that clip alone is enough to go back and watch that video. Awful record, not a fan. Coming in at number nine, it's the only EP on the list, and I'm making a rare exception for this EP because of how absolute trash it is. Kaunashi, a second chance at forever, the brilliant lies from Casey Diamond, as if the album title wasn't cringe enough. You're not a movie, okay? You're not a sequel to a movie. There's no rom-com. There's no coming of age over here. You're an EP from a math rock band. But what? This isn't math rock. This is emo. <laughs> this is post-emo. What is going on over here? This record is so bad. A lot of like disco beats going on on this thing that I just had to say, this is a disco record, boys. <laughs> Pack it in. We've gone too far. What a bummer. It's so far from the sound that they are known for. Math rock, riffs, crazy time signatures. No more, those things are gone. Those elements are to be forgotten, okay? This is all about whiny vocals, awful production, the worst songwriting that you've ever heard, all in an effort to say, no, it's part of a bigger piece, guys. You don't get it. This is like act two. No, no, no. This is a bad album is what this is. I gave it a 33. Very sad. No good. Hitting our list as the eighth worst record I've heard this year is the As I Lay Dying record. Now, I might be a little bit biased because of all the drama that was going on surrounding this record and surrounding this band through the year. And if you've been on this channel, you're very familiar with this drama, Tim Lambesis, the guy that hired a hitman to off his wife in the early 2000s. Everyone just started leaving his bands. What could be going on? Oh, and a record is coming? Oh my God. Not an ounce of chemistry can be found on this record. Just so many opposing ideas fighting back and forth with one another that it's just like the least cohesive experience going today. Another legacy band putting out a trash record. And I do find it so funny that after the drama, the record still just had the audacity to draw. <laughs> so funny, dude. Oh, coming in at number seven is the worst pop punk alternative rock little album I heard this year. And I wanted to like it. Charlotte Sands, Can We Start Over? I'm gonna suggest that you do, because this 
sucked so bad. I gave it a 25, and at the time, all I had to say about it was that it was absolutely horrendous. I'm sorry, lady, you're really gonna have to try again. Awful times, awful songs, bad stuff from top to bottom. Not a good record, not by a long shot. This really was the year of me not seeing eye to eye with most rock and roll fans, because Bring Me the Horizon dropped post-human next gen, and people liked it. I couldn't believe that people liked it. It is just so cringe, bro. Holly Sykes is back at it again, and I had no other choice but to give it a 22, and most other people out here are glowing about this record. I couldn't believe it. Are they really that hypnotized by the cheekbones of Ollie Sykes? It is crazy. And for once, the rare moment that me and the needle drop see eye to eye. I agree with you, Anthony Fantano. This record was a bad one. Next on the list is a far less known band, but god damn, this is some of the worst sonic waveforms that my ears had the displeasure of being exposed to all year long. Being as an ocean, Death can wait. I gave it a 21, and at the time I said, unenjoyable, stay away. The album art is way cooler than the music. And it really is, the album art is actually kind of sick. But they tried to do some like post-hardcore, new metal, spoken word, hip hop kind of fusion thing, and just missed the mark so bad. I like those kinds of things, and they can come together in a very creative, fun, engaging, captivating, compelling way. Just I can't use any of those adjectives to describe this record over here, unfortunately. Here's the fourth worst record I heard all year and I know what you're thinking. Hey, didn't this come out last year? And you might be right. Part one of One More Time by Blink-182 came out last year, but this over here had like 12 new songs on it and they all sucked so bad. I could tell why they weren't included in the original version of this record over here because they were stinky as all butts, okay? I gave it a 20, and at the time I said, adding more runtime to an already mediocre album is not the way to fix it. It just comes across like a greedy, major label way to release the same album twice. I hate deluxe culture, it's gotta go. Yeah, artists, release the album one time. Throwing on a couple remixes and a couple B-sides and then releasing it a second time to stay at number one Taylor Swift is such a shitty move to do, I hate it. Release one record, see how it does, and move on. A bunch of snakes, bro. All right, it's top three, or bottom three, however you wanna look at this. But we're talking about the Disney record, Disney Goes Pop Punk, a whole new sound. Holy sh I don't normally include like compilations or soundtracks on a list like this, but oh boy, this is making a special exception because of how trash this thing was. No bops, no riffs, all songs downgraded. This is just a bunch of old pop punk bands, new pop punk bands, if that's even a thing, doing twists, doing takes on old school 90s Disney songs and absolutely butchering them in the process. Yeah, me giving it a 13 is about right. That's 13 out of 100. Okay, we're getting into top two territory right now. Lock in your guesses. I'm pretty sure you know what the number one pick is, but did you know that Gwen Stefani put out a record this year? Yeah, it's kind of like a uh, radio pop country record called Bouquet. I gave it a one. One out of 100, this sh sucks lol. My god, holy smokes does this stuff suck. Wait, did you see her little Christian ad that she put out for this prayer app or whatever? Now Gwen Stefani, I swear to god, used to be cool. But you gotta check this out over here. Pop this a peep. Christmas season has always been my favorite time of the year. It's a season that we get to celebrate the birth of our Lord. This year, I'm excited to share that I've partnered with this amazing prayer meditation and music app called Hallow. God damn, that's so crazy, dude. We get to celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ with our prayer application. Download this app and prayer with me today. I'm Quinn Stefani. Bro, what happened to the I'm just a girl girl? What happened to all those spider webs that you were once walking through? What a fall from grace. Biggest fall from grace of all time, if I'm being honest with you. But if she's happy being a Christian country girl, all the best to her, I guess. But for me, I find it nothing but corny. Fake, forced, deliberate. Number one, the worst record of the year by a country mile. I know you know it. Ronald Radkinson, Falling in Reverse, Popular Monster. Some of the songs on here are five years old, okay? He just repackaged them and he was like, hmm, I think I have the audacity to call this a new record. I had a lot 
to say about it, okay? I had an entire diary entry of what I wanted to say about this record. I'm not gonna sit here and read it all. You can go over to my album of the year profile if you want to read it for yourself. And also, if you wanna spoil what my top records of the year, go check out my album of the year profile. It's all listed over there. But this album, people, holy smokes. It's just Ronnie Radke whining about being canceled, calling all the people that cancel him whiners while whining about it. It's very hypocritical and lacks all self-awareness possible. I hate Ronnie Radke and everything that he stands for. I think that he is an awful human being with bad creative ideas, potentially one of the worst people that you could follow online. Just an absolute scum of the earth kind of guy. He canceled a bunch of shows over there in Europe because of his uh, stint in prison. And then when fans asked him about why he canceled those tour dates, he got mad at the fans and was like, hey, you don't get it. You don't understand why bands and artists have to cancel sometimes. So shut your face and be grateful, you dumb idiot. Sometimes bands just have to cancel and you're not smart enough to know. And you might be thinking right now that I'm using hyperbole, but he really was talking down to his audience like that just for asking him, hey, why are these dates canceled? We didn't cancel the show. You don't understand why shows get canceled. You guys just get f mad because you're not, you can't see your favorite singer. You, you understand what f venues do? There's a whole laundry list of things of reasons why shows get canceled guys it's not like i don't feel so good or even even then if someone doesn't feel good you guys still berate us when somebody's sick and they have to cancel you guys still berate everyone you have no idea how this works you think people just cancel shows to cancel them yeah some people do you know some people do do that who cares okay it's it's it doesn't we don't you don't need an explanation on why we canceled the show just know that it's probably for a f important reason if a show gets canceled know it's for an important reason you don't understand there's safety things there's there's reasons for there's uh, people's personal health there's safety issues that happen there's literally so many laundry list of things that are potentially at play here it's not just you know what i don't want to play vienna cancel it F these people that's not how this works you understand? And at the time, it wasn't known that the dates were canceled because of his prison stint. And now afterwards, it's just so funny to see that clip of him berating fans about the reasons why bands have to cancel. And it really was because he was in prison. Ronnie sucks. Falling in reverse is awful. And if you like them, you have questionable taste in music. I'll tell you that right now. Normally, it's like, oh, you like what you like. I like what I like. I'm not going to be a dick because you like a thing that I don't like. But when it comes to falling in reverse and Ronnie Radke, if you like what he puts out if you like his creative efforts then you have bad taste and have no idea what actual art is you stupid and those my friends were the worst records of the year thank you so much for watching see you later